Hi, hi folks. So what I want to do today is just kind of break down the use of the LFO tool for side chaining in Logic Pro. So there's kind of a few ways that you can use the LFO tool to achieve your side chaining effect, but it's not always kind of clear through the documentation that's provided uh, how to actually achieve all of the effects that you might want to do. So stick around and I'll show you the three ways that I have found that you can use the LFO tool to do your sidechain compression. I'm Tom and I make electronic music under the name Bamboo Leaves. On this channel, I tend to break down electronic sounds and sort of subgenres to show you how to do sound design and track composition and help you with your music production. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, consider subscribing to this channel for future tutorials like this. If this video has been beneficial to you, leave a like, it'll be really helpful for me. Great, let's get into it. The first way to use the LFO tool to get your um, to get some side chaining is to simply apply an LFO tool to your individual track and let it do its thing. I'll find a sample that would kind of sound good with some side chaining on it. We'll go from there. Okay, we've got this pad sound. Pad sounds tend to sound quite good with side chaining because there's a lot of high frequencies in there. Method number one: just apply the LFO tool directly to your track. If you're doing sort of maybe some house genres, a 4-4 sidechain is all you need. And by default, the LFO tool comes with a 4-4 sidechain. So if I just play this now, you'll start to hear it. So you can change the envelope so you can bring it down to be a more aggressive, lower volume automation. You can bring out the tail so it's a really uh, slow pumping effect. Or you can bring it up to be a lot tighter so it returns to its full volume really quickly. You tend to kind of have that with a kick drum, so let's just find a kick loop. It kind of fits, it's a 4-4 beat. Okay, without it. It's boring, we haven't got that kind of pump. Let's add it back. Okay, cool, simple. Just apply it directly to the track that you're interested in. Next, right, what we're gonna do is we'll actually say that we have a few instruments that are all playing at once and we want to apply some sidechain to them, but you don't want to be adding an LFO tool to every single track because that kind of takes up a lot of your CPU and it's sort of bad practice to sort of duplicate your effort over lots of different tracks. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a few sounds, we're gonna bust them all to a single bus and then we're going to apply one single LFO tool on there. So let's have a look at that now. Yeah, sounding big, right, cool. Let me take that original choir sound and in the output, I'm going to bus it to bus 10. For the synth lead, I'm also going to put that onto bus 10 as well. Now we have uh, both of these going to the same bus. Instead of me having to copy this over, by the way, I held control and I dragged it there to duplicate that same thing. So we had effectively get the same effect. but I've duplicated that LFO tool on two tracks. So instead of doing that, what I want to do is I'll just remove that and on that bust stereo out for that bus where I put both of those signals to it, I'm just applying that single LFO tool to it. So if I just solo that, you can hear both of them are in that bus and that one LFO tool has been applied to both of them. Let me take it off. Here is where we get a little bit stuck and we are kind of, we don't have the flexibility of being able to sidechain exactly when we want to. And with genres that aren't like house or just straight 4-4 four, four or eighth or half beat kind of genres where the kick might or the snare might land, it starts kind of being quite limiting where you just have this 4-4 four, four for the LFO tool. What we really want to happen is every time an instrument triggers off, we want the LFO tool to react to it and apply the sidechaining. Like I say, we want to have it so that when a MIDI note triggers, 
the LFO tool will trigger an envelope and it will just do it once. It'll go do do every time we hit a MIDI note. In order to do that, what you have to do, let me take off the LFO tool from any of the tracks. So now we just have no side chaining whatsoever. What you need to do is you need to create a software instrument and you need to have the instrument set as LFO tool. So the instrument that you're actually applying to this software MIDI track is the LFO tool. So let me create that. So you can see here that in the instrument area, we've got the LFO tool, not in the audio effects where you tend to put it when you're putting it on directly on tracks or on audio buses. Here it's in the instrument and that's important because now you can see that we have this option before, we didn't have this sidechain option that would pop up. And the sidechain option lets you bring a signal from somewhere else and run it through the LFO tool as if it was on the track that we had it before. So if you remember before we had bus 10 that we had put the choir pad and the aftershock synth lead to. So I'm going to bring that bus as the side chain. And now if I just play it. Right, okay. So here's another part there. There was some side chaining being applied, but because we've doubled up the signal. So on the bus 10, we have the full signal just playing through as it is. We've also duplicated that signal in this LFO tool and that's having some side chaining, but we were hearing both of them at the same time. So you couldn't really hear that ducking effect. So what you've got to do, is you've got to go to your bus down here. You need to change the output to be, well, this is one way of doing it as having no output. So it's not actually playing from the bus, but the bus is still rooting into the LFO tool. So. So you can hear the ducking effect now. So we don't have the bus 10 playing to stereo out as well as the LFO tool that's kind of doing the ducking. We took that away and now we just have the LFO that's do, doing the ducking. So how do we get it to trigger on every MIDI note? That's the big question. In this sidechain LFO instrument here, I will create a MIDI region. I will then loop that over. To keep it simple, I'll just do a 4-4 beat like we just had. Okay, so let's draw a note on every bar. That in itself doesn't do enough. What you need to do in the LFO tool is you need to double click in this MIDI region over here. It will trigger off that once for every single MIDI note. If you didn't double click it, it would only trigger it off and sometimes it doesn't come back to zero and you kind of miss some of the ducks. So you need to make sure you double click it. And I can't even see that from here, but I think it says env in there anyway. Yeah, so if you see on the help text at the bottom, it says retrigger sync for MIDI notes, make this have a restart like an envelope. So that's what we want. So now it's doing the same thing. However, if we actually started kind of going for something a little bit different and we didn't want it to be a 4 4 beat, so now we might just want it on do, 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 like that. Cool, so now we have it really flexible and exactly how and when we want it to trigger. So now if we kind of have some weird kick beat, for example. And that is pretty much the third way of using the LFO tool for side chaining in Logic Pro X. I know you can kind of do the same thing with Ableton and FL Studio and any other DAW, but to me it wasn't clear at all how to get this done in Logic Pro X for a little while um, and the videos on this weren't particularly clear, so I'm hoping that that might clear up some things for you. Thank you for watching this kind of quick video, I'm hoping it was useful. If you liked it, uh, make sure to subscribe to this channel and like this video and otherwise I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.